Hello, 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 my beautiful people. To all of my wine enthusiasts, enthusiasts, I'm sorry, happy Friday. Look what I have right here with me. So guess what we're going to do today? We are going to do some wine tasting because guess what? For all of my wine lovers, it's summertime here in Houston, right? And it is hot, it is very hot. So who wants to drink heavy, bold flavors and sweat bullets, okay? So we have someone who is responsible for Rodeo Uncorked, if you've ever been there. He is a wine guru and his name is Mr. Carl Chargois. He's going to come in and teach us all about summertime wines and some really good flavors by some people you might know. We are going to be right back with some wine tasting right after this. at Ron Carter Cadillac. Drive the new 2021 Cadillac XT4 Luxury Collection for only $319 a month. The new 2021 Cadillac XT5 Luxury Collection for only $399 a month. Both for 39 months lease with just $1 down. Or purchase either and enjoy 1.9% APR for 60 months plus bonus cash. Gold Freeway just two minutes south of the Beltway. Shop smarter when you shop Ron Carter. Ron Carter Cadillac. My Bonito promise is to make sure my baby is safe and healthy. Because I know it is possible to acquire syphilis, HIV, or other STDs without knowing it. Getting tested is my very first chance to protect my baby. Doctors are required to give expectant mothers three separate tests for syphilis. If you're pregnant, ask your doctor if you're being tested properly for syphilis and other STDs. Congenital syphilis can lead to a miscarriage, stillbirth, or an infant death. Don't risk your baby's health. To find out more, visit MyPrenatalPromise.com. Welcome back everyone. As promised, I have a wine guru in the house. And to all of my wine lovers like myself, chi -chi, are you ready for some summertime wine flavors? Let me introduce you to Mr. Carl Chagois. Hello, Carl. Hey there, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for joining me today. No problem. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I'm ready to get the party started. Are you really? Okay, Good, good, good. And today I really want to focus on summertime wines. Well, good, because that's what I brought. Awesome, I'm a Merlot lover, right? Uh, but let's I love be Merlot clear. Too. But in 100 degree weather, who wants to yeah, drink Merlot? Not all the time. Okay, not let's go. What do you have today? So I brought some things out that I think may be good for those warmer weathers, side by the pool or the porch or just kind of just hanging outside, patio sides. Um, so Prosecco, always a good, uh, mm -hmm. nice little bubble start. Can I pour you as I talk? Absolutely. Okay, so Prosecco is something that is clean, it's, yeah. it's bubbly, it's light. It's refreshing, mm -hmm. offers some great flavors of, of uh, citrus and, and a little pear and apple flavors mm -hmm. as well. This one happens to be from um, somebody you may or may not know named uh, Mr. Earl Stevens, but you probably know him better as E-40, the rapper. So, oh, yeah, this okay. is E-40? E-40, this is his. It's I like a, this. And Prosecco can come in rosé as well. So okay. this is actually good. So what do you think of this? I like this. So I'm, I'm gonna, so I kind of like Prosecco as well. Uh -huh. I usually go to, my go-to brand is La Marca. Okay. Is that, it's a little sweeter than this. Uh, okay. Not yeah. too much, but I like this. Yeah. Yeah, you know, brands, you know, you try different brands, try a different style. There's a wine for everybody, I think. You got to try to find the ones you want, you like best. But for, for, the, for the money, this is actually quite good. Yeah. So here's the question I've always asked. Yeah. What is the difference, bet besides we're the region, okay. what is the difference between Champagne and Prosecco? Very good question. So Champagne is a region in France right. where they grow some grapes there and they make a bubbly wine. Prosecco is a region, uh, is a space or a region in Italy where they grow some grapes and make a bubbly wine. Shut up. This is <laughs> so, from Italy? That is? Okay. It does yeah, say so, Italian on the bottle. So okay. Prosecco is, is Italian. It's okay. made from a grape called Glera. And the grapes that make up Champagne in France are Chardonnay, Pinot Meunier, Pinot Noir. So those are different grapes altogether. And Champagne is pretty much regulated that if it can't be even called Champagne unless it's from Champagne, France. I heard France. that. That yes. it cannot be called Champagne unless it's from, that, unless it's from exactly. Champagne, France. Exactly. It's okay. like saying I'm from Sugarland or I'm from Houston or I'm from right. Dallas or you know, kind of thing. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I like this. So good. Would you mix this with anything? Like, so for instance, if you... Wanted to make a Bellini. Yeah. Possible to. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, Bellini, uh, you can mix this and make an Aperol Spritz if you want to make an Aperol Spritz. Okay. Which is another type of cocktail. You can mix orange juice here, make your mimosa. Right. 
So, or you have cranberry, you know, adaptations on mimosas, cranberry juice, other juices as well. Mm -hmm. I feel like, uh, of course, champagne has a more brute to me. It's a more dry. Yeah. Is that what you, okay. So this is not as dry as champagne. Correct. This has a little more sugar level to it than that. But, you know, I, I hate to say it's sugar level because people will think sweet and it's not really sweet. It's not sweet. Yeah. yeah. It's just kind of tart and uh, pleasant and not too sweet. Yeah. Okay. And but, what else do we have here? So Look. we have some rosés here. Now, rosé is all the fat. So yeah, mm -hmm. you need to empty that out some kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm too heavy. Um, so Rosé is, is really coming into fashion. Uh -huh. In fact, uh, so much fashion to where a lot of celebrities are getting involved with uh, rosés. Okay. So there's rosés from different celebrities out there. The, the one we happen to have today is from a celebrity you may have heard of named John Legend. Uh, I think I might know yeah, him. Okay. Yeah, John Legend. <laughs> this is Legend Vineyards Experience. Uh, this is their rosé. Okay. Uh, let you try this. Now, rosé is the founding place is... Provence in okay. the south of France. Okay. So think Saint Tropez, Cannes Film Festival, Monaco, that Ooh, kind of thing. Yeah, okay. exactly. So that's where this is uh, the the rosé really hails from, and it's a blend of different grapes. And it's, the process is a little strange. Think about it like this: you 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 put a roast in the oven, and you take it out uh, about th in, a, in a little shorter time than well done. Mm -hmm. So it's rare. It's kind of same with grapes. You squeeze the grapes, you let the grapes sit on the skin, you okay. let it take a little bit of color off, and then you rack it off. Okay. I don't. I, I don't smell anything like I usually would. Okay. Yeah. This is actually a, a, a lighter. It's not so much aromatics, and the bubbles from the prosecco is actually lifting up the ar aroma. Okay. So you may have to actually put your nose in the glass, all the way in the glass, to smell this wine. Okay. Got it. And I was I, I was taught to put my nose all the way in, open yes. my mouth. Yep. Okay. There, there's some processes there. I know. Yeah, it smells yeah. good. It smells let's, good. Let's see what it tastes like. Oh, see, different, light, very light, light. strawberry, pomegranate, cranberry flavors, huh. uh, very refreshing on the palate. Some good acidity to lift that little uh, piece of cheese or, or uh, charcuterie that you may be having at your picnic. I like because I sometimes I find rosés. I mean, in between, mm -hmm. I, I pick one off the counter at the local grocery store, yeah. and I find mm -hmm. something a little too maybe spritzy for me. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it has some sort of fizzante going yeah, on. Yeah, but I like this one. Yeah, this is ah. actually it's a flat still rosé, um, very good, and uh, it's only like twenty dollars on the shelf. And everything. love that. I love yeah. that you said it's flat because it is. It's yeah, perfect. yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not bubbly. It's not a bubbly rosé. This is actually a still rosé, and it's really good for pairing with foods as well. Love it. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. The other other rosé we have, actually, why don't you pour that in here? Okay. That, yeah, because I've tasted these before. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next one is called Hogwash. And I, and I typically don't like the name Hogwash. Right. But in this uh, in this instance, hog is actually trending pretty well. I understand um, there's something called high on the hog trending well mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So Hogwash is actually a blend of, ro of grapes from California. So we went from southern France to California. And notice the color difference. I was just about to say that I was just looking. Okay, this is much lighter. Yes. Is the, that, L the LVE is much lighter. Is that because of the flat? No, or? that's just because they decided to take it, uh, take the grapes off the skins okay. a little earlier. They just wanted a sort of salmon pink color versus a more strawberry pomegranate color. Okay. That's all. all it's, right. it, and it's a, it's a style. That's all I'm it is. Style smell preference. it. Okay. I can. So I can. This one I can. I can smell. Yeah. Like I of, can. Yeah. A lot of strawberry coming up front, um, and a lot of uh, maybe some orange peel and uh, pomegranate cranberry notes. Kind of good. It's different styles. Completely different styles. Yeah. So this was a little heavier. A little heavier. A little richer. So it depends on what you're looking for in your wine. Yes, at that moment. But I like both for different occasions. For different occasions, yeah. So let me ask you, what, what, okay, so we talked about the LVE, cheese, smoked Gouda. Sandwiches, okay. um, uh, salads, uh, light fare. Okay. Any, any type of light fare like that, it'd be fine with that. Okay. Oh, for either of these, actually. Okay. And depending on how much levels of flavor you add to that, those different fares, uh, you want a richer wine. Okay. And what's, what's the alcohol content that we're looking at between these two? You know, the alcohol is very low. It's under 14%, so this is about 11.5% alcohol uh, and 12%. Normal, normally, wines are not over 14%. There's a few that get over 14% alcohol. I've had a couple. There, there are a few. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few out there. But, but normally, most wines are around that 13 to 14% alcohol, and then as you of more blush wines, it gets a little bit less, maybe 11 and a half to 12. But this is perfect because it's it's warm outside. It's yeah. hot. It's beyond warm. Yeah, it's hot. Right? Yeah. So this is really, really good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can and I pour actually, this one? Yeah, pour that okay. in. And they actually come in a sparkling version also. Um, and, and little cans, little different packages. Really? Like, yeah, like little oh, cute, cute packages packaging. like that. Yeah, like throw them in a ice chest and a cooler that we go to a picnic and everything. So awesome. Cool. Okay, perfect, yeah. perfect. Um, I love all of these. Okay. What do you eat? Let's, so talk, tell me about Prosecco. What would you have with Prosecco? So Prosecco, I like it with just some nice, a nice salad, nice clean green salad. Uh, I prefer to have something like, uh, or even some even fruit salad or mm -hmm. that, that offers it because it offers some acidity to it. And it's always good to have Prosecco 
as a just as an aperitif, uh, just a, to welcome people to your home. Or, I love that. Yeah. Now let me ask you this because I've been noticing this. So mm -hmm. I struggle with buying prosecco when it's just me at home. Okay. Because do you have to drink the whole bottle with like a, <laughs> like seriously? Because because you're gonna lose the fizz, right? Yeah. There's some there's some tools that you can buy uh, called a stopper. That, that I have stoppers, but I feel like you feel like you have to drink it. <laughs> Don't feel Don't so. Tell all my secrets, Carl. <laughs> no, there's a stopper you can put on it, and it'll hold it for you know, and put in your refrigerator, and it'll okay. hold it for a day or two. Okay. I wouldn't recommend it holding for longer than that. Exactly. So yeah. two days maximum for Prosecco. Uh, for most part, yes. Because, you know, you start to lose flavor. And as you open the bottle and more oxygen gets in, it starts tearing up the wine. So over time, if you can tell the difference in the taste, and most people can. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. These samples have been great. Okay. We are going to break. And guess what? We're going to sample some more. We'll be right back after this. at Ron Carter Cadillac with the new 2021 XT6 Luxury Collection with standard third row seating for just $4.59 a month for 39 month lease with only $1 down or purchase and receive 1.9% APR for 60 months plus $2,500 bonus cash. Gulf Freeway just two minutes south of the Beltway. Test drive the new 2021 Escalade today at Ron Carter shop Cadillac. Shop smarter when you shop Ron Carter. Ron Carter I'm a part of the prenatal care club now, taking all my STD tests. Did you know your doctor's required bylaw to test you three times for syphilis and HIV? Yes, my husband and I are making sure I get all three tests. Oh, good, testing is the key to preventing congenital syphilis. And good prenatal care is your first labor of love. Glad to hear your husband is so involved. Thank you, yes, taking all my STD tests for syphilis is important to both of us. My prenatal promise is to prevent a stillbirth or miscarriage. To find out more, visit myprenatalpromise.com. To all of my wine lovers, my wine enthusiasts, we are back. Now, now we're going to talk about red wines. And I know most people love them a good Cabernet, most wine red drinkers anyway. But let's talk about what Carl has. So Carl, what do you have for me? You know, we talked a little bit earlier about how red wines are too warm for the summertime and too mm -hmm. hot and everything, but, but it, has a, it has a place. Okay. okay? It has a place, the, the grill, if you put the something grill. on the grill, you yes. want something that go with those grill marks, and those grill marks add uh, a complexity of flavor that maybe white wine or rosé don't truly stand up to. True. Right? Okay. True. So we have a couple of reds here that I want to show you. One okay. is a red blend called High on the Hog. Now we talked about hog mm -hmm. earlier, and hog is kind of trending well. High on the Hog is actually a, a phrase that has been used in the South for a long time. Mm -hmm. So and so what I'm going to do is pour this for you, and I want you to taste it first, and then tell me what you taste, and then I'll talk about it a little bit, and I'll join you if you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you, I yeah. love me a red blend, okay? A okay, good, one. good. So I'm going to be a, a hard critic on this one. Do it, do it. Let's see what I get. I'm sometimes a hard critic Ooh, on, on reds. Yeah. It smells like a blessing. Mm. Oh, there Ooh. you go. Exactly. <laughs> this is wonderful nose, a run for aroma coming out Oh, my here. gosh. Deep, dark, uh, rich floral components as well as fruit components in here. Uh, I liken it to if you go to a fruit cobbler and open it up and you smell this mm -hmm. fruit coming up. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Okay. Uh, there you go. I'm sold. <laughs> I'm sold. The one thing I like about red blends like this is that they are so versatile. You can serve this with grilled chicken, grilled steak. You can. You can have this with um, any type of meat, honestly. I like um, this. A charcuterie board is perfectly with this. If you have some sliced salumi, uh, some cheeses and things. And I say salumi because that's plural for the different types. I was going to say, what? <laughs> yeah. Salami? Salami. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got the different kinds. Soprasetta, Gen that's Genoa. True. That's, that's true. That's true. So it's awesome. So anyway, this goes well together because the spicy and fatty of those mm -hmm. salumis um, goes really well with the tannins and the fruits here. It's very light. You know, it's not that heavy. Most people think a dark, rich red wine has to be weighty. And it I, doesn't it, have to be. This is, I can honestly say this is my first... It's not, it's not full body. Is it medium? This is actually medium to full body in flavor, but medium body in weight. Yes, in weight it's, of, it's of, perfect. Of the wine. And I would drink this in summer. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Is that this is actually, there are some red wines out there that are good for summer. And other red wines that are good for summer are Beaujolais. 
Mm. You can actually chill down Beaujolais quite nicely in, in, our, in a ice chest. You don't want it ice cold, but right. you do want it a nice little chill on it. And most wines we drink, uh, most red wines anyway. Right, room think, temperature. They think room temperature, but it's room temperature not of the houses in Texas. That makes sense. Room temperature of caves in France, which is about 55 to 65 degrees. So go ahead and chill down your reds. Oh, chill, and you know I never chill my reds. Chill down your reds. You would drink them much too warm uh, in, in, this, in warm regions of the country. Um, the one thing that happens, if you notice, wine has alcohol in it for some reason. I don't know why they did, <laughs> did that. But alcohol, as it gets warmer, it rises to the top of the liquid it's in here. So you don't want that alcohol to be sitting on top. So you chill down the wine to bring it more in, uh, in, in sync. And we can find this high on the hog, local grocery stores. Yeah, and you know, finding wine is sometimes tough mm -hmm. because some local grocery stores say, um, I'm not sure if I want to carry that. Nobody knows that wine. It's a new wine. I'm mm -hmm. not sure if I want to take a stance on it. Ask your retailer. That's the best way to do things. Say, hey, look, I shop here all the time. I want this wine in my shop. Yeah. Find it for me. You want my money. I want, you know, and I want to shop here. Absolutely. So. I am enjoying this. But let me ask you this because I've never chilled a red wine okay. ever in my mm -hmm. life. So if I do, so if I have guests coming over at 4 p.m., yep. what time should I put it in the fridge? What time should I take it out? So red wines like Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, uh, red blends, deeper reds like that, you want to chill them down to about, you know, again, 55, 60, 65 degrees. So refrigerated for 20 minutes is fine. 20, 25, 30 minutes is fine. Ice water bath for five minutes would be perfect. And actually five minutes maybe too long, depending on how warm it was at the beginning. beginning. Okay. So let's so say three to five minutes uh, would be fine but as an ice water bath and, and that should be perfectly done and just kind of give it a tilt and a mix before you open it up and it should be perfect temperature. I love that. Okay, okay. I'm going to dump this one. And yep. what else do we have? So the next one we have is another wine from Mr. John Legend. Okay. okay. So uh, Legend Vineyard Experience has uh, another wine. It's a Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley. Now Napa Valley is known for making great Cabernet Sauvignon. Right. And so this is, this is also a great Cabernet Sauvignon. So I'm going to pour this for you. Okay. And I want you to notice the difference between this wine and the wine we had earlier. All righty. I'm going to pour this yeah. out and taste this one with you. I can already smell it. It smells like a cat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and most people, you know, the difference in flavors. Now, most, and one thing I want to touch on is that, you know, these are different grapes. Cabernet Sauvignon is a grape. Merlot is a grape. Right. Pinot Noir is a grape. Um, and Gamay is a grape. So these are different grapes. And, and I kind of liken this, and to help people understand it, is like when you go to the grocery store, you see all these different apples. Mm -hmm. You see Fuji apples, mm -hmm. Red Delicious, um, Empire. Da, uh, yeah, all of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all the Gala apples. All those apples have different flavors and textures. So do grapes. And grapes of Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot are different because they have different flavors and textures. Hmm. That's that's, I like that yeah. because you never think about that. Yeah. You ready? I'm ready. All right, let's taste. Cheers. Let's see. Mmm. Light for a cab. This is very light for a cab. Okay, so I like this because it's, it's lighter than most cabs in weight. Mm -hmm. Again, summertime drinking but rich, dark, yes. dense, intense, luscious, um, lush, voluptuous in, in the flavor. I mean, the flavors are all over the map of dark fruits like blackberry, black currant, uh, rich black cherries, um, rich fruits here. Love that. So let me ask you. So I am a Merlot lover. Okay. okay. Love it. I don't know why though. Right. I have no absolute. I just know that growing, drink, you know, you drink what you like, you drink what you like. So <laughs> how can someone determine what their palate actually likes? Good question. So this takes practice. Okay. Practice means getting a bottle, opening it up, and turning. <laughs> <laughs> it means money. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, you don't have to spend a lot to get a lot. Okay. You, you know, budget yourself. Say, hey, can I afford about ten to fifteen dollars a bottle every week or every day, however your budget allows, <laughs> uh, to have with dinner, have with some food, and try to have with a friend. Okay. Uh, drinking alone can be challenging, <laughs> some for some, but when you drink with for others, you get to bounce off some ideas of what that wine tastes like. Mm -hmm. And so, if you're spending ten to fifteen dollars a bottle every night, and if you, and every glass pours, in, if you go to a restaurant, it's like five ounce pour. So consider it's five glasses in here at $15, that's $3 a glass. Okay. So it's actually quite affordable. It is, it yeah. is. And I can honestly say, so I'm thinking about me. I definitely started with um, Pinot Grigio. I okay. can't stand it now, right? Which is so crazy, <laughs> right? I start off with Pinot Grigio. I start off with Pinot Noir. I don't care for either anymore. Really? Neither. So one of the things you'll find is your palate is migrating and learning. Okay. And uh, it was probably one time when you drank coffee with a lot of sugar and a lot of milk, and now you drink black coffee. Mm. And that, and that your palate has changed. You, oh. you stay the same. The, the coffee is the same. The milk's the same. But you said, no, my palate wants something a little less sugary. Mm -hmm. And as you grow in your palate memory and learning understanding, you'll start to asking for less sugar, believe Got it or not. It. It's kind so of let me ask you this for my wine connoisseurs. Yeah. I don't think I'm a connoisseur, okay. but I'm definitely a lover. Okay. Okay. Um, so sometimes I see like the different wine ratings. Yeah. Who's rating this? Like, what is this coming from? Good question. So there's some r critics everywhere. Okay. <laughs> there's critics from Wine Spectator magazine. Okay. There's uh, Robert Parker, who's a really renowned critic. Um, 
I, I tend to tell people if they're going to follow these ratings, look at who the sourcing is. Okay. And just like you may follow a movie critic or a restaurant critic, mm. okay, or book critic, and you read that, read that criticism and you went to the movie or the restaurant or the book and said, I don't agree, that critic's not for you. True. So very, you got to find true. a critic you're in line with and that, that is balanced with your palate. So the Wine Spectator is actually very good in, in a lot of things. And some people don't find themselves aligned with everything they criticize. That's true. And let me say this. I want to say I actually... I'm not, I don't buy expensive bottles unless it's an, a really nice occasion. Okay. But you can find really affordable $15, $20 bottles of wine Absolutely. and have a grand time. Absolutely. I, you know, I, I challenge anyone. Well, the, the fun part for me if you're going to a restaurant is finding that buried treasure. <laughs> the right. one that costs the least and, and get the most out of it. That's my fun part for me because I know wine is a little easier for me. But I, I tell you that you're right. You don't have to spend a lot to get a, a, a lot out of your wine. Wine practices on the whole in the world has, has increased dramatically. There are sharing of best practices as winemakers traversing the globe, making wine in other places, helping people understand. And overall, wine has, over the past 25 years, has gotten so much better to where those things that shone really bright in the sky mm -hmm. don't shine as bright anymore because ah. so much else has risen to the top. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Allow someone else to come up. Yeah, Well, exactly. I want to thank you so much for coming on and for teaching all of us about wine. Sure. For teaching me something and allowing me to try something new. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It. And guess what, guys? We're going to be right back after this break. Move up at Ron Carter Cadillac. Drive the new 2021 Cadillac XT4 Luxury Collection for only $319 a month. The new 2021 Cadillac XT5 Luxury Collection for only $399 a month. Both for 39 months lease with just $1 down. Or purchase either and enjoy 1.9% APR for 60 months plus bonus cash. Gold Freeway, just two minutes south of the Beltway. Shop smarter when you shop Ron Carter. Ron Carter Cadillac. My prenatal promise is to make sure my baby is safe and healthy. Because I know it is possible to acquire syphilis, HIV, or other STDs without knowing it, getting tested is my very first chance to protect my baby. Doctors are required to give expectant mothers three separate tests for syphilis. If you're pregnant, ask your doctor if you're being tested properly for syphilis and other STDs. Congenital syphilis can lead to a miscarriage, stillbirth, or an infant death. Don't risk your baby's health. To find out more, visit MyPrenatalPromise.com. Welcome back. Did you guys enjoy the wine tasting as much as I did? Probably not, but that's okay. <laughs> so, you know, we are always talking about dreaming big, dreaming big. How many of you guys have ever tried box wine? I'm very curious. I personally, I think I started drinking it maybe two or three years ago, but before it had a very, very bad reputation. And so something that the owner of our station was talking about is living outside the box, right? So we've always known wine to look like this, but somebody decided to be creative. Somebody decided to live outside of the box and create this amazing wine for people like me who like to run to the store really quickly and just grab something. So whatever your dream is, please execute it and be okay, be completely okay with living outside of the box. You do not have to fit into anyone else's constraints, but your own. So whatever it is, Take your pen, take your paper, write it down, make some action steps towards it every single day, okay? If you need to send an email, if you need to make this phone call, whatever it is, you have to put some legs on those dreams, okay? They will not just come to a fruition by living in your head. We are going to be back right here on Monday. I hope you guys really enjoyed this and go try some of these wines because I promise you they were good and my taste buds do not lie. You can trust me. We'll be back on Monday. And guess what? If you have something amazing that you want to share with us, make sure you email us on, at info at AmericanStar.com or follow us on Instagram at AmericanStarTV. We'll see you Monday. Bye-bye.